Welcome back to another edition of Tiny Tutorials. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I usually do some um, gel plating or stamping or stuff like that. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I had done a, um, a faux wood finish on the top of my table in my um, little camper that I'm redoing. And Here's an example of one um, a sample piece that I did for a client before I was getting ready to do some a finish like this on their ceiling. And if you can see um, the wood grain that's in there, this is actually on a piece of wood, but it's a simulated wood grain. And I did this in a typical wood grain color using a gel stain. But today, I'm gonna show you how to do that um, using some unusual or um, not quite so typical colors in the wood grain. Um, I have this piece of panel that I'm going to use to paint on um, in my decorative painting, my um, fine art painting, and I've base coated it with um, this metallic lustrous gold metal finish. It's a metallic by Valsbar and I got it at Target and I'll put a link to that in the comments as well in my list. Um, so I base coated this piece of wood panel with the Valspar metallic paint and then I'm going to do a glaze over the top that will be um, a wood grain. And I'm gonna start by using this um, glazing medium. This one is from the Michaels brand Art Minds. Um, and but there's all kind there's all different types out there that you can use any kind of glazing medium and then i'm going to use a just a regular paint color this one is a bare paint and it is oceanside which is actually sherwin williams color but they are mixed it for me so i'm going to show you how to mix that up first we're going to start by getting a palette or a paper plate in this case i like to use paper plate and we're going to um mix the medium, the glazing medium, with the paint. And we're gonna do that on the paper plate. So more of the glazing medium than I do paint in my mixture. And there's, I don't have a specific ratio, but I will pour some of the glazing medium out and then I'll add some paint to it. And I want the glazing medium to be um, the ratio of glazing medium to be higher than the paint. I mix mine with a palette knife. You can really mix it with anything. But what the glazing medium does is makes your paint more translucent than it would have normally been. So if it was an opaque paint that you would not have seen through or been able to see through before you added the medium, all this does is Thin it out, um, give it a longer dry time, and make it more translucent, able to just be, see through it better. Take a tool that is specific for wood graining. So this is the tool that I use. It has a kind of a rounded surface, so it's not flat, it's you roll it so it, um, has a rounded surface that will roll easily and a handle. Um, probably got this off Amazon, but most craft stores carry these. I will put a link um, in the comments as well. Then I take a paintbrush, a broad, flat brush, and you do it in strips that are about as wide as your tool. Um, and you can always overlap some so here I'm going to overlap and you want to kind of vary the amount of drag that you have in that so that each pass doesn't look just like the pass before. You want it to be a little bit um, unique each time. So you can see that I just um, am going over each pass a couple of times 
Um, I don't like there to be like a seam down each side so that I like to go over the pass again just to keep the um, seam from showing up. I don't want it to look manufactured. I want it to look organic. So I'm going to keep doing this. Um, saw it, it, one next to the other all the way down until I have the whole surface just the way I like it. So I'm gonna kind of come over and overlap a little bit. And again, varying the amount of times that you rock it. The, the rocking motion is what makes the design. So I'm liking the way that's turning out. Now what's happening, as you can tell, is the tool is pulling away the top coat paint and revealing that undercoat. So the undercoat in this instance was the gold metallic and the top coat is the Oceanside kind of a turquoisey blue color. So again I'm just going to do a stripe down making sure that I get it all covered. I've wiped off my tool again to get all the paint out of the grooves and then I'm going to do another pass. And you can just go right back over it if you don't like the way that um, something is looking on there. So I, again, I don't like where the seam, it looks like there's kind of a seam right there, so I'm just gonna pull over that. And if I hated that pass, I could just paint right over it, just like I showed you a minute ago. I'm gonna do one more pull down here. So what I'm doing is actually creating a background for a piece that I'm going to paint over the top of this. So I will um, let this dry completely and then use it as a background. But this technique in and of itself is a beautiful, leaves a beautiful faux finish that would be just a great piece of art all on its own. Or, like um, for instance, I did it on the tabletop. I've seen um, this done on the tops of countertops. Turned out beautiful. I like the um, gold showing through a lot. So I'm gonna go back and reveal that gold a little bit more. Okay, so I like the way that's turned out. I'm gonna go through and do the edges in this, with this glazing medium. There you go. Um, what it takes at least a couple of hours, depending on your weather. I like to always let my stuff, my backgrounds dry overnight. Um, and in this case, I'll probably let it dry a couple of days just to make sure this glazing medium does slow down your drying time. So give extra, allow extra time for drying. But um, I will show you the finished product in the comments below. And um, be sure to like our page, please, and subscribe so that you see all of our videos. But I hope you've enjoyed this, and um, I'll see you next week.